Hi, I'm Pat and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about coolant issues that may come up on the BMW i8. If you're new to the channel, please click the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications as I'll be posting more i8 content. Today we're going to talk about the coolant systems in the i8 and some things you may want to look out for or if you have a warning light on the iDrive, well, this is the video for you. The BMW i8 has two coolant circuits, which makes it very unique compared to every other car that's out there. One coolant circuit is called the high temperature coolant circuit. It's called high temperature because the mid-engine produces so much heat that that temperature overall is much higher than the other circuit. That other circuit is called the low temperature coolant circuit, and that keeps certain accessories on the car at a low temperature so that everything functions perfectly. But if you came here today because you happen to have a notice on the iDrive that your coolant level is low, well, let me address that first because I had the same exact problem happen to me. In fact, I was about six hours from home and I received the pop-up on the iDrive that my coolant level was low and I needed to be careful when I was driving or I may overheat the mid-engine. This was very alarming. But luckily, my passenger was able to help me pop the hood and we looked at the reservoir up front. That round bottle? Well, it's supposed to be filled to halfway, and it was. So I thought to myself, there has to be some other problem. Either it's a sensor, some wiring, or a module. Well, it turns out it was actually the sensor and the wiring that failed. So if you experience this problem and you're able to open the front hood and you notice that your coolant level is at halfway, don't bother doing anything at this point. Take it to a shop, take it to the dealer. There is a technical service bulletin out there and that SIB number can be used for mechanics or technicians to be able to repair this problem. Ultimately, they're going to replace the entire coolant expansion tank because the sensor is built into it and they're also gonna replace some wiring because if that sensor fails, some coolant can actually travel down into the wiring towards a computer module and you don't want any of that to corrode and have problems in the future. So they cut the wiring, they solder in a new piece, they replace the tank, they top off your fluid and you're good to go. But if you're going to do the job yourself, there are part numbers as well as a service manual entry, but it's at your own risk. The other thing that could come up is you also have that warning and then you pop the front bonnet and you see that the coolant level is low or the tank appears to be completely empty up front. If that's the case, you probably have a coolant leak. And when you have a coolant leak and you decide, I'm gonna open the tank and add some more coolant, you could actually be introducing some type of pressure into the tank. You see, the system is a vacuum pressure system. So when they fill the high temperature coolant circuit, they connect a vacuum to the top of the reservoir in order to make sure they drain as much air out as possible and then open a valve in order to allow coolant to then enter the system. And what this does is it ensures that coolant not only travels to the low parts where the piping is at between the front and the rear of the I-8, but it also makes sure that that water travels up into the water jacket of the mid-engine. If it's not done properly, there'll be an air pocket at the top of the mid-engine, and when you drive around, you're gonna get a warning that there's an over-temp error and you need to pull over and you need to let the car cool down. So, if you see low coolant, take it to the shop immediately. If you try to add coolant to it, what you're probably doing is introducing some air up into that water jacket at the top of the mid-engine, and ultimately you're going to receive an error that you have an over-temperature indication. So, just take it to the shop if you have that problem. Which leads to our next issue, if the coolant's low, then maybe you have a leak somewhere. And a few folks out in the Facebook group, the BMW i8 group, and there'll be a link in the description below, have sent me some pictures and video showing me exactly where their coolant leaks were. Some folks had a coolant leak up in front at one of the radiators. See, there's one radiator up there for the high temperature coolant circuit. But when he took it to the shop, they said, we have to replace all four radiators the high temperature and the three low temperature coolant circuit radiators. Well, that was insanely crazy because he took it to another shop, an independent mechanic, and they said, I oh, will just replace the one. That's the one that's leaking. Some of the other problem areas that I've heard about include 
coolant leaking from different areas, such as the piping that runs under the middle of the car, especially an area in one of the aluminum pipes where there's a welded bracket. Sometimes that weld breaks loose and coolant comes out there. Another issue, where the rubber hoses or plastic hoses backed by the mid-engine connect into that aluminum tubing, there have been leaks there as well. And last but not least, I've heard of the thermostat housing producing a leak. See, the thermostat housing for the high temperature coolant circuit is back there on the mid-engine. And it's very different than any other thermostat I've heard about. In fact, the computer controls when that thermostat opens and closes in order to have an optimum temperature of coolant flowing through the mid-engine. So it'll send a signal to that thermostat. Inside there is some sort of heating element that heats up a wax plug and causes it to come out of the way. It's kind of crazy. There'll be a link in the description below for the service manual entry for this so you can learn more about it. But before we continue, I want to show you the circuit diagram for the high temperature circuit so you know exactly where that is running and what accessories it's cooling. If we start at the front, there's the radiator up front, that's number one. Behind that is the expansion tank for the high temperature coolant circuit, and that is the reservoir that you can visually check to see what your coolant level is. Next in the stream is the characteristic MAP thermostat, and this is the device that actually opens and closes depending on a signal and some heating element in order to meter how much coolant is passing through the mid-engine. Then you have the exhaust turbocharger auxiliary coolant pump. Now why is there a coolant pump connected to a coolant circuit that runs through the exhaust side of the turbocharger? Well that's when you turn off your mid-engine or you go into electric mode, the heat that's in there is no longer being dissipated by engine oil that would normally be flowing through it. He added a second cooling circuit, which of course is the coolant, in order to keep that turbocharger cool so it lasts longer. Next, the water flows through the mechanical coolant pump, the exhaust side of the turbocharger, then through the combustion engine, the engine oil cooler, and then a coolant temperature sensor. Then it goes to the coolant pump for the electric auxiliary heater. And that is what's up front here. That electric auxiliary heater will heat your cabin in case you're not using the mid-engine. So sometimes if you're driving in electric mode and you get no heat, but you only get heat when you're driving in sport mode or that mid-engine's running, well, that's your auxiliary electric heater up front that's broken, and you're going to want to get that replaced. Then it goes through a coolant temperature sensor and then through a coolant pump for the electric auxiliary heater. Next is a changeover valve, which of course has to do with making sure that coolant flows through that auxiliary heater when you're in electric mode. And finally, an electric fan that's up there in the front of the bonnet, that's also cooled by coolant. So your high temperature coolant circuit sure has a lot of work to do. And these particular components have more of a potential to actually leak and display a low coolant warning or a low level inside that expansion tank. So keep these things in mind if you encounter any types of issues with the coolant system in the I-8. So that covers all the high temperature cooling circuit components. And if any of them have to be replaced, the entire high temperature coolant circuit needs to be drained completely. And that's because the only way to refill it is using a vacuum system. Once the system's been drained and all the couplers underneath have been reconnected, you can apply a vacuum to the top of the reservoir. What that does is it ensures that as much air as possible is out of the system. And once you connect coolant back to that little valve that just pulled all the air out of the system and open it up, that coolant rushes in and fills the gaps. And that's required because your mid-engine in the back is at a high point, just as high as your coolant bottle that's up front. So when you say, get all the air out of the system and add water, that water will flow downhill and then back uphill to the top of the mid-engine. That's very important because, of course, your water jacket up there at the top of the block and near the head keeps things cool. So if your mechanic ever drains the system for any reason at all and they refill the system, they have to go through a process to ensure that they bleed it correctly. And if you're bleeding it at home, there's a link in the description below. But if you bled it at the shop and you're getting high temperature warnings on the iDrive, 
take it back. They did not bleed it properly. A lot of folks have said that they needed to go back three, four, five, six times because they did not know how to properly refill the coolant in the system to prevent a high temperature warning at the mid engine. Now, Porsche has been doing this for years. They've had a rear engine design, and of course the low point has been the piping between the radiators and that rear engine. They got it right. So, if your dealer can't get it right, maybe you ought to take it to Porsche. But if you decide to do it yourself, you can also buy kits like this online, and there'll be a link in the description below, and there's lots of videos out there to show you exactly how to use it. If you encounter some problems where you end up with an air pocket, at the top of the mid-engine, you could always go underneath and massage the different radiator pipes that come off of that mid-engine to try to force some of that air out of there. And then follow the standard bleeding procedure in order to clear any air out of the system in the I-8. The second cooling circuit is a low temperature cooling circuit. It is designed to keep other components cool so you don't have any drivability issues. There haven't been as many issues reported with the low temperature coolant circuit, which is great. It's really good to hear. But it doesn't mean that you can't have a problem. There are three radiators on the low temperature coolant circuit, and there's tons of different accessories that it keeps cool. So if any of those fail, they have to drain down the system, hook up the vacuum source, refill the system, bleed it. It's a similar procedure to bleeding the high temperature coolant but there'll be a link in the description below if you want to give it a try yourself. So let's go over some of the components that are in the flow chart for the high temperature coolant circuit. First, we start off with the low temperature radiator, and then we go to a coolant pump in the low temperature circuit. And then we get to the electric machine. That is your electric motor that powers your front wheels. Next is the low temperature cooling circuit expansion tank, and that's just a small little guy that sits up just beyond the cowling and the front hood. Next, the coolant will flow through the electrical machine electronics. And these are connected to the electric machine or the motor, and they have a lot of work to do. They gotta pass a lot of power between that battery and that motor, as well as the 12 volt battery and some other systems. So we wanna keep those electronics cool, and that's how we do it. Next, there is a coolant pump for the low temperature coolant circuit in the rear and that's followed by the range extender machine electronics, REAM. So what does REAM do? That is a electronic device that has cables that connects to the starter generator. So when your battery powers the REAM, the REAM can send power to start the car, or when the mid-engine is running, it can retrieve power from that circuit in order to charge the batteries, for example, in sport mode, but also, if you're in sport mode and you put your foot to the floor, it also provides power to the starter generator to reduce load on the mid engine to give you an extra e-boost. Speaking of the starter generator, that's exactly where the coolant goes next in order to keep that device cool. Then the coolant travels to the cooled electromotive throttle control. The throttle on this car is open all the time, but it's after the turbo which means that all the compressed air from the turbo is generating heat and it could build up on that throttle. Well, this keeps the throttle cool. And the reason the throttle's open all the time is because it's a Valvetronic engine. So your valve lift is your throttle in this engine, but there is still a throttle there in case there's a problem with the Valvetronic and you need a throttle to function exactly like a throttle should. Next is the transmission oil cooler the transmission oil cooler bypass valve, the indirect charge air cooler, and this is your intercooler. So it's a wet intercooler rather than a dry intercooler. This is followed by a low temperature radiator and another low temperature radiator. So yes, the low temperature coolant passes through radiators twice, and I believe that's in order to keep it low temperature. So I believe this wraps up all the potential issues that you may have in the BMW i8 with your coolant system. Again, warnings on the iDrive, do not ignore them. If you turn the car off and turn it back on and you don't have a warning, you might have a sensor issue. You might actually have low coolant. You could be losing coolant and not know it. You could overheat your engine. So pay attention to those warnings on the iDrive. Take it to a qualified mechanic and have it repaired. If you like the information that I provided today, please give me a big thumbs up 
If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and ring that bell for notifications as I'll be producing more i8 content. Thanks for watching and happy motoring.